at a two to one COP. Same average performance of the GE heat pump in America. Only it's 20 below in dead airspace. And we challenged all the heat pump manufacturers to come anytime you want to either find a hoax with us or bring your unit down and see if you can do that. Nobody ever came. A lot of customers came, lots of people, people from all the world came, Pakistan, everywhere. So anyway, we're in here testing this every year, every, uh, every weekend for a year. And a man came to the show one day and if what, a, what a guy this was. Now we're trying to build this thing. It's gonna take two years and $2 million and I'm raising capital selling heat pump things to get the money. And a guy walks in and he comes up to me at the end of the show and he says, Mr. Lee, I am absolutely astonished. I wanna shake your hand and I wanna tell you, I have no doubt you have got the best heating system in the world. Yours tops everything out there from solar all the way down the line. You did it. But you need to know me. You know why you need to know me? Because I have built the world's most efficient heat engine and you have got the world's most efficient heat source. He says if we got together with our two technologies we could become the most dangerous men in the world. I thought, wow, I've never been the most dangerous man in the world. I've kind of wanted to be. And so, you see, this man's name was Dr. Fisher. Now, this guy built the steam, built, proved that they built the steam engine wrong. I had the pleasure of building his unit in my research lab, and we took his great big unit because why wouldn't I want a great big one? I don't want to put everybody on the grid system with a new system that can exploit them some more with all the arrogance that comes with it. I wanted to give people the opportunity to be totally independent of the grid system. Remember, that was my goal. So we took the big one we had and we scaled it down into a model not much, a little bit smaller than this one. It was a little smaller than this. It was about that long. It's about 13 inches long, six inches in diameter. And that one was going to be big enough to be able to power all the energy you needed for your house. And so I didn't want one bigger than that. And by the way, that little unit could fit in the glove compartment of any American made car. I went across the United States of America telling my story. I told it in every state of the United States and I got a thousand people to join me telling my story. We put a media ad campaign together because the media wouldn't cover it. So we ran commercials. And we did a 60 second commercial cutting a power line and saying you can power your house with no electricity, external electricity, run your car with a new engine that runs with no gasoline. We did a 60 second commercial nationwide. As far as we can tell, about 10 million people saw it. And after that happened, that was too much. That couldn't be tolerated. And so I got a letter from the state of California inviting me to come back to California to go to court. So I flew back from New Jersey to California to go to court. And when I walked into the court, the judge said, you're probably wondering why you're here. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, because I've been ordered by the state of California to put you in prison. And I said, well, that's really interesting. You're putting me in prison, but I've never been convicted of the crime. <laughs> How do I go to prison without a trial and without being convicted? And I said, you can't do that, can you? And he said, well, he says, I've been ordered by the state of California to put you in prison, so that's where you're going, but sounds like you got a hell of a case for appeal. That, by the way, is a quote, and I do have the transcript. I walked out of prison two years ago, and now we have rebuilt our whole national network of distribution of distributors. We're in every state of the United States. We're in every major county of the United States. We have people now who understand exactly how the government works, exactly how the big boys work, exactly how the energy companies work and we've got it all figured out and we've got far 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 more technology than we ever had in 1987 we got a lot more money than we ever had in 1987 and we're about to rock your world as if the amazing over unity results of these pioneering inventions are not enough a curious combination of side effects to free energy research involves such things as the transmutation of metals, the formation of new isotopes, and yes, even anti-gravity. Levitation effects from spinning magnetic disks conjure up images of UFOs hovering in mid-air. British inventor John Serrell has led the way along these lines, but his technique is not the only approach. 
The remarkable works of Canadian inventor John Hutchison has drawn widespread attention from businessmen and government scientists since 1979 when he began using ultra-high electromagnetic frequencies to transform matter in some very unusual ways. It has come to be known as the Hutchison effect. The objects you're seeing um, moving there is a form of levitation by uh, translational movement, meaning that the objects become lighter and can float around, the heaviest being the barium cylinder that you see there um, with the two wires coming out of it. it tends to slide around on seven pounds of its own weight. The physics of it is self-resonation of what they call a ferromagnetic and piezoelectric barium type name. Uh, through a power amplifier and broad and narrow um, bands of electrical energy going into this crystal. So the applications of this in advanced applications using free energy or zero-point energy to power it would be in uh, propulsion technologies. This is a crystal converter unit that I made about a year ago to see if the principle worked and indeed it seems to work to this day. Um, the principles involve the Casimir effect and uh, space charge type of barrier technology in semiconductors and um, a, a jitter activity called zero-point energy that goes through time and space. The idea is to get the material inside this to interface with the uh, jittering action of zero-point energy. And moving on to what they may look like inside, I actually bring out a piece here of this material of common minerals and that, produced in a special way. And I take a reading here. And I should be getting a higher reading. I have a hot spot somewhere on here. I have here almost a half a volt, as you can see. As one can see, there's no batteries in this or anything else except this crystalline material with different uh, configurations. And this is a steady state. It's always that and has been tested up to a year's time and under stress tests also. So which made me decide to then, of course, mount the same material in cylinders. Different cylinders, of course, there are different mixes in there, and I found that uh, that some of the cylinders are not as powerful as this material here, or this very tiny one here. Actually, this has more power than this large artillery shell unit here. And what I want to do, of course, is to um, <coughs> demonstrate it in the sense of it making actual power. That means to turn a small motor. Okay, I'm t attaching this to the base here. Another lead to the top, and it should spin, which it does. So yeah, basically, this kind of material powering motors. Of course, it's a very small motor at this time, but scaled up in larger amounts of, of material can power up to uh, several horsepower if needed. Hutchison hopes his simple shake-and-bake method of producing these crystal energy converters will attract investors who can see the potential of permanent batteries which never need charging. Non-toxic that will interface with zero-point energy in space and time. Hutchison's more dramatic experiments border on the paranormal and have generated more than just a passing interest from U.S. military research labs. We've had about 750 demonstrations of levitation, translational movements, uh, metallurgical samples falling apart, uh, changing into transmuted unknown metals. Uh, quite a variety of obscure types of effects, wood impregnated into uh, metals, other objects in metals, uh, monopole uh, magnetic fields written up in many journals. 